This program comes to you compliments of the Tobago Inspirational Network. To support this and other programs, we encourage you to give to TIN. Contributions can be made at any First Citizens Bank at account number 2034679. We thank you for your support. Seasons greetings, blessings to one and all, greetings to our viewing audience once again. I bring you greetings on behalf of TIN on this season and on behalf of Destiny Apartment Global Ministries with yours truly Julian Armstrong and Pastor Eloise Hines. Well, I want to get right into the word because I want to utilize my time wisely today. Last week, you know, I shared on uh, the topic lies being told and deception the deception behind it now this is part two of that um, teaching from last week lies being told and the deception behind it i want to prepare you for the next season or the next year that is coming so that you'll be able to stand strong and you'll be able to make it to the end endure to the end of those things that god has prepared and given you to do in this season last week i spoke on the lies being told as I said before and I look at how things the things that we need to be careful of we need to be careful of the things um, I warn concerning the things we need to be careful of going into the next year because of how the enemy of our souls will be operating through the area of deception which is very still very tangible and very real today hallelujah don't think that it has escaped us because COVID is finished. No, it is still here. And it's in, in a greater magnitude than you will even realize and operate and even among believers or those who call themselves believers. Hallelujah. But are not truly surrendered to the Lord. Hallelujah. So he will try many things to get many to lose their faith and even to give up. And he will try to delude many. Ah, so look out for these things. Look up for these things. I'm not a pessimist in any way, you know, but I just want to give you some things that will help you. It is important that we always remember, hallelujah, that each year we are coming closer and closer to the end of the world and Christ's return. And a new year does not mean that the devil is taking a nap at Christmas time and he's waiting to, he's awaiting to, uh, to pick things back up after the year begins. No. Sometimes we live our lives that way as if uh, the devil is taking a break. Oh, it will be all well and dandy. It's all about love and Christmas and so on. And then when the, the, the year opens, he will pick things back up. No. He is, he, he is on an onslaught to make sure that even some don't even make it into the next year. Hallelujah. That's why your beginning is just as important as the end. Hallelujah. So he's, 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 he's planning. And the new year begins. It is sad. When the new year begins, it is sad to say that many Christians at times, when Christmas comes around, they see it as a Christian holiday. And when I say a Christian holiday, I don't mean that they're traveling, that they're planning to, to travel somewhere and stay in a hotel or they're planning on a staycation. No, it seems like there are many who take spiritual vacations. And it is around this time that people are so busy that they pray less. Hallelujah. Is it, is it around this time that you find that the churches are empty? <laughs> You know, some people may say rightly so, because we have to prepare. We have to get ourselves ready for Christmas. Oh, my God. And many don't realize that, listen, the devil is not making any holidays. It's no wonder that it seems that he put the majority or most of his holidays. I know there's a lot of satanic holidays that happen at different periods in the year, in March and January. And they have a satanic calendar. Do you know that? They have a satanic calendar. And there are three things that they're planning even for this December. So even as you're planning for Christmas, the devil is also planning for Christmas. 
Hallelujah. A matter of fact, he has a day on that the, the December 25th called Yule Tide. Yule Tide on December 25th. Hallelujah. And that celebration is of the birth of the son. Ah, the birth of his son as a young babe. You see, Satan always tries to counterfeit. Hallelujah. He's always trying to counterfeit. So he's also celebrating a babe, the sun god. Ah, uh, December 25th, Yule Tide. Ah, uh, he always tries to rival what God is doing. And you must remember that even on December 25th, there's a day called the celebrating, celebrating the summer solace, even though it's not in summer. And that is when animal and human sacrifices are made. Then there's December 24th, it's called the demon revels. And that's the male, that's the time where they offer male and female sacrifices. That's why you wonder why, although on December 25th, it's supposed to be all about love and peace and so on. So many deaths take place around this period. Even suicides. Because this is a period where men will, will feel a, a greater sense of loneliness and aloneness. Hallelujah. And they can't seem able to cope with that aloneness. And so many take their lives around the season. So I want you to be aware. That's why we need to be praying. And that's why Satan makes this, this, this time a time where he makes his onslaughts. Because it's the time where most believers slack off. He knows that, okay, they are slackening off in this period. So that's the time I'm going to put down my stakes even stronger. Because I know that I will get some effect because this is a period where many are cooling off. Oh my God. Listen, as I said, your beginnings is just as, an import, as, an, as an important as your ending. Or as shall I say, as as vital as your end. Zechariah said, the prophet said, for who have despised the day of small beginnings? How you start the new year will determine how you finish. I don't know about you and how you view coming to the end of the year. But every time I reach to the end of the year, I'm not, I'm not looking forward to waiting until the year start to say, listen, I'm going to get my fire burning now even hotter. So that I can maintain myself for that year. Even before the year comes, I pray one prayer all the time and I cry out to God and I say, God, let my year, my year end. Hallelujah. Even greater than I begin. Hallelujah. Because I said, God, I don't want to end cold. Because it's very hard to start something when a fire, when it's gone cold. Ah. But if you start well, you will end well. So he said, God, before this year has come, I'm already letting my trying to stir, stir up the, the fire, stir up, stir up my, my God, that, that, that combustion, let that combustion of anointing flow and river flow from deep within. Because I realize that if I'm going to start this year, I must also begin well. I must also end well. You see, because we are always making all those resolutions. Every year we make resolutions in how we will begin. But I'm telling you, it's more important how you end so that you can begin well. Hallelujah. So that is, that is what it is. It is much easier, as I said, to add water. Hallelujah. To, 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 to add to whatever flame or sparks there is. But if there's none, it's very hard to start it from scratch. You can go and start a fire. You will see even when you get coals, you have to make sure you put some things on, that, on those coals so that that fire will burn. Oh my God. But it's easier when the sparks are there. There are many who are trying to make res resolutions and how they will begin their year for greater momentum. Uh, but you have to be, be, be prepared. Hallelujah. You must have the kind of engine, my God, to start with so that you can finish well. Ah, This has to become your life cycle. But many have the cycle where, as I said, they are following just what is they are accustomed to. 
I will do all that I can and when the year starts, I will try to get hot again. No, my friend, when you are trying to get set some things that engine may cut out, you may not even start. How can you understand the end if you do not know the beginning? I say this in light of the fact that there are many who live with a God view of life. There are three views of life that they live with. Many live with. Some live with a God view of life, so they have a keen sense of what God is doing in their lives and what God is doing in the world. So even though they may not understand everything, they are ready to face whatever comes because they have been prepared. Hallelujah. Then there are those with only a world view of life. They only gaze their lives according to the changing patterns of the world. Oh my God, and that's a sad place to be in. They just change to suit what is happening. The changes that is taking place in the world. They are the ones without any real stability. Ah, They may have some level of stability, it seems. But that's why the Bible says the days will test, the storms will test your fortitude. Ah, you, can, you, can, you can live by chance. You must know, hallelujah, what you're able to withstand because you've already been setting your roots and grounding yourself in the right things. You must be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding. And there, then there are those with a blank view of life. <laughs> they have no expectation of anything. Hallelujah. Whatever will be, will be. Excuse me. Ke sera sera. So that's how it ends up. Hallelujah. They have no view of anything. They are blank. And if you live that way, that is how your life will be. Hallelujah. You will be just going through the same cycles over and over, hoping for things to change. And not trying to make the changes that is necessary by the help of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And sometimes, my friend, you have to go back to the beginning to get a clear view of your future. You have to at times. So that you will know what, how, what God has said before and what he's saying now. And what he's going to say after. You may not know, but at least you know that what he said from the beginning and he has started you on. Hallelujah. You must know that you are still in that, uh, you are still going in that direction. And you have not swayed. You must have a clear perspective. You must understand. You may not have a clear understanding or a view of the outcome. But you know that you are in the direction that he's pointed you towards. Ah, if you don't know, you will just be wandering through life, hoping, chancing your life, hallelujah, for a better day or better life even, hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verses 11 says, and Satan, lest Satan shall get an advantage of you, for we are not ignorant of his devices. You must know how he has been operating. Since the beginning of time, we shall take you back through a, 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 um, shortly. You must know. These things have I written unto you, 1 John 5, 14, um, 17, around there it says, that you may know that you have. You can know. You can know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't live your life in ignorance or the devil will take advantage of you he will take advantage of your life if you do not understand how he operates you must have a clear view of where you are going because you will end up somewhere regardless of these three views you will end up somewhere mm, hallelujah so let me go back again to the beginning as i have started last week and i've taken the cracks of, of the, the majority of what I've, I've shared, I've taken from this passage of scripture. Back to the beginning. If you understand the end, you must know, you must understand the beginning. If you're going to understand the end. 
Genesis 3 verses 1. Now the serpent, it says, and I read this last week also, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And if you want me, uh, if you want to these to see an explanation of these scriptures, you can have to go back to next week, last week's sermon on part one of this teaching that you will see, because I don't have the time to to explain a lot of things again. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. See, she knew. She knew what to eat. She knew. But she said in verses 3 of Genesis 3, but of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden, God have said. So she knew what God had said. You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, causing her to question even what she already knew, you shall not surely die. For God know that the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the Bible says, say what it says. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, listen to this. She saw that it was good, hallelujah, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Then she took of the fruit. See, the devil didn't come and force it upon her and say, look, take it. She took it of her own accord. She made her own choice, and she did it, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So the devil did not pass it on. They took it out of their own will and their own choice. And the Bible says the woman saw that it was good. Even before she ate of the fruit, she saw it was good. How did she know it was good and she didn't even taste it as yet? She saw through her human perception. Because the enemy calls her, you see, when, when you, you, they were already on a spiral even before, she took of it. He was already working on their reasoning and their perception and causing them to see from their senses instead of hearing from what God have created them to hear from to the consciousness, their spiritual perception. Hallelujah. Ah, oh my God. So he was already working. Hear how, hear how he started working. Even before she ate, she saw that it was good without even having a taste of it. Ah, and she didn't even ask the devil and say, listen, you taste of it already? Did it taste good? Was it nice? How does it taste? Was it sweet? Did it taste like a mango or an apple or watermelon? She didn't even ask him if he tried it. Hallelujah. But that is how he works. That is how deception works. Hallelujah. She saw that it was good. How did she know it was good? Just by seeing. You see? You see that? That is deception. Hmm. Previously she had said, God have said. Now she's questioning what she already knew. Now she's saying it is good without even a taste of it as yet. And this is how deception works, my friend. As I said last week, every man has a level of truth within him. You know. You have a conscience and you know what is right from wrong. That is how you are able to come to God. Hallelujah. According to Romans chapter 1, it says, the, the truth that we have, that men ignore and why they find themselves in all sorts of folly and wickedness and evil and turn into gods and idols, is that they suppress that truth. It's not that it wasn't there. The Bible says in Romans, they suppress that truth. Hallelujah. And then on the other hand, they said they exchange that truth for their own gratification of sin. So it's just a reason in a way from that truth and eventually away from God that causes man's downfall. And that is why Jesus said in John 8, 31, Jesus said to, then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, 
So here he's speaking to those who believed on him. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. He said this to those who believed in him. Ah, not to those who didn't believe, but to those who believe in him. You see, my friend, believing is good. It's good to know that Jesus died and he rose again on the third day for our sins and he was in a stable. He came as a baby in a stable. It's good to know, hallelujah, uh, that he was born of a virgin and all of these things. And it's good to know. It's good to know you believe in him. But believing is not enough. You must know the truth. If you are to stay free and walk free and live free. Hallelujah. And have a successful life. Hallelujah. You must have a true grasp of truth. And that truth must be living in you. Believing without truth can lead to deception. Eve knew the truth. But Satan caused her to use human reasoning to take what she knew or she thought was good. And even though she already knew it wasn't. It is called deception. These are the things you need to look out for. In the coming season, because as I said, there will be a heightening, there will be a heightening of this spirit. And Satan works on many this way through their senses. She saw by listening to the theories of lies that the enemy was bringing. And as I said, Satan did not pick the fruit and give it to her and said, Look, taste it. I taste it myself, <laughs> and it tasted good. Did he try it? Now, if he knew it was for all of these things and their eyes would be open and they would become gods, why was it he won? He's a god, yes. But why didn't he become <clears throat> like the god that he wanted them to become? Ah, oh, my God. Listen, these things will help you to make decisions. Every choice, having options is not always, a lot of options is not always a good thing. Hmm? Because you have the power to choose. It doesn't necessarily mean that you can always, that, that that's a, a good thing, that you can always make the, 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 the right choice. Having all of, all of these choices, so many times, we have so many choices today, and we say, oh, so that gives us the right, hallelujah, to do as we please because we have no, hallelujah. So let me bring this to a close. Let me see if I can bring this to a close. She perceived that it was good based on what the serpent said. Hallelujah. She perceived. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm speeding along now because I'm just getting a signal. My time is short. Uh, what he offers, in he always offers something in contrast. Always with the tag of making you believe it will make you better than before. Ephesians 4, 17 says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that henceforth ye walk not as the Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their minds, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the truth. You see, when your understanding is darkened, that's what you do. You moved away from the truth. Because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness, the Bible says, of their heart. So you see where the blindness took place, not the physical eye, ah, not the physical heart, but the other heart. You know that there's another heart that you live by, that you can't see the consciousness, the, the, the spiritual perception that, wants, that you once knew God true. When you become vain in your imagination, this is what happens. It's a degradation. Hallelujah. Romans 1 21. Because that which that when they knew God, the Bible says, they glorify him not as God, neither were they thankful because they became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts was darkened. My God. Ah, my God. Albert Byron says they became foolish, frivolous in their thoughts and reasonings. They acted foolishly and employed themselves in useless and frivolous questions. The effect of which was to lead the mind further and further away from the truth of respecting God. As the year opens, please do not find yourself in frivolity, setting your gaze on things you think like Eve are good for eating not just physical food i'm talking about but setting your heart so much on the material things hallelujah that you lose sight of what is more important ah, she saw that it was pleasant 
Everything you see, my friend, you don't have to have. Ah. Don't argue yourself into why you should have it if you don't need it. Hallelujah. It could be the enemy reasoning with you also. Any man that tries to reason his way to God is reasoning his way out of God and reasoning his way to darkness. And he becomes alienated from God. Hallelujah. It was not his physical eyes that were blinded, but the inner man of the heart. 1 Peter 3, 4. When you think and where you think and see from that, that needs regenerating. Hallelujah. I'm, I just have to speed on because my time is short. Hallelujah. As I come to a close with this last scripture. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 4. In whom the God of this world, it says, have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine on them, hallelujah, and give them freedom. The God of this world blinds the mind, not, not, not your mind as you have it, your physical mind. There's another mind. Sometime I'll share on the inner man, the other man, hallelujah, of you, that we don't pay attention to. He blinds your perception. Hallelujah. And that's why you don't make right decisions. That's why you need to be regenerated. You need to be reborn. You need God to transform your mind and your heart. And then you will be able to make the right decisions for your life. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. All darknesses is the absence of light. When light is not getting in, darkness is the result. When truth is not getting in, your mind becomes darkened and blindness is the result and you can no longer make sensible decisions because your mind is darkened hallelujah by your desires don't lose your focus my friend on this year coming open your eyes because there's going to be a heightening of deception it is already taking place hallelujah but i pray today that you would have heard something you would have heard something from this message that would have helped you to be able to say listen Hallelujah. I want to live my life differently as the year opens. I don't want to start the year the same way that I, am, I, have been, I have been living my life coming to the end. You don't have to wait until the year opens. Hallelujah. You can end with fire so that you can start with fire. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, my time is up. So stay tuned until next week. I want to bring you further, further studies on the light, that the true light in this season that we will be looking to, many will be looking to, the light, Jesus Christ, the light. We also are lights, but I'll be focusing on that true light. Until then, I pray that you will bless this evening. Share these messages with someone so that others also can be encouraged and blessed. Until then, God bless you and do have a great week.